Hey, Joe. Well, officials with the stocks regulator said that uh, part of the reason for this move is that they want China to have a greater role in international pricing when it comes to commodities. Uh, uh, also, uh, the regulators had said that they want to make sure that China is much more competitive when it comes to global markets. So the uh, moves are that the uh, government here is going to launch more futures contracts. So this includes shipping. Um, an RMB denominated commodities future market, pilot schemes for IPR securitization, and then they're also going to accelerate the um, inclusion of foreign investors in domestic futures trading. So this all comes after President Xi Jinping had uh, uh, announced plans to set up a stock exchange right here in the Chinese capital, Beijing. Uh, this um, this uh, uh, exchange, according to President Xi, is going to be focusing on innovation oriented uh, uh, companies, so smaller companies. And the um, the stocks regulator kind of put a little bit more meat, uh, flesh onto the bones after the announcement uh, today. Uh, so uh, they said that the um, board is going to include select tier new third board shares. So the new third board has been um, an over-the-counter market that's here in Beijing, not particularly successful. It's been around for a couple of years, but focuses also on some of the smaller companies. Um, so it's it's been discussed as maybe a rebranding effort to try to um, boost the importance of Beijing when it comes to small and medium-sized enterprises. Also, uh, the stock regulator said that there's going to be no price limit for the first day of trade, um, and then it would be capped at 30 percent from the second day. Um, another effort to try to get some of this funding to a smaller uh, tech companies, Joe, that uh, really are starting to see some of their options of going overseas to raise money uh, limited to them. Eunice, it, it, up until this point with, with commodities, uh, I mean, commodities trading has to, and futures and, or, or some, something that affects the same thing, that's been around for thousands of years. I mean, people, farmers have always had a way of trying to, you know, minimize their risk. And, and I think of it with oil and, and fuel, and I think you mentioned shipping. What, it, it's not like the country was without this until now, until they get their own uh, CF, you know, commodities, CBOE or whatever you want to call it. What, what's, what have farmers yeah. and everybody, what have they been doing up to, the, up to this point? Do they, they must exist there. Well, there, there is, I mean, there is a futures market and, uh, you know, there are commodities that are um, already be, yeah. um, available course, yeah. for trading by, you know, over, from foreign investors. But it's just that the market here is seen as very high risk, uh, from a Chinese standpoint, something that's quite new, and they don't want to have a whole lot of foreign money coming in and then uh, kind of making things a, li a little bit more disruptive in the financial market since it's still uh, not as developed or mature Weird. compared to the U.S. So Weird they've been story, opening yeah. up kind of slowly, and this is seen as another step in that direction. can't imagine trying to try to hedge, hedge risk uh, over there in so many different industries without <laughs> futures. And it's not just speculation. It's, it's the, really the producers and the, uh, the people that use it you know, that, that give the, the, the speculators that create the liquidity, but everybody else is using it for a real important purpose. What about, uh, we're monitoring it, there's a Bloomberg report, I don't know why the if former mayor is involved with this, but says that the city of Beijing is proposing making an investment in Didi via state-run firms, and we're seeing the stock move. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, so the um, the headline had said that it looks as though the city of Beijing is is uh, looking to invest in Didi for state control. But from what I've been hearing, it um, might be more of um, and the, the city allowing some Beijing-backed companies, including one of Didi's uh, rivals, to be able to in, take a stake in uh, Didi, um, kind of similar to what we saw with, say, ByteDance, where you have a small stake and potentially the government having another small stake in addition to these these Beijing um, and state-backed companies um, having some small stakes in Didi, and then having uh, what's kind of called golden shares. So you're having a little bit more influence um, when it comes to the operations compared to the amount of shares that you actually have in the company. So um, there's also some talk that there could be a board seat uh, taken by the, by the government, uh, similar to 
to what happens with ByteDance. Um, but again, at the end of the day, um, I mean, nothing has been confirmed, but it wouldn't be completely surprising given the way that uh, the Chinese government wants to um, make sure that it has control within the tech sector.